In this video, we're going to learn about further properties of definite integrals. So here's our first property. The integral from some number a to the same number a of a function f of x dx is always equal to zero. Now, one way to see this is just to do an example. Like, for example, the integral from one to one of, say, f of x equals just plain old x dx is equal to x squared over two evaluated at one and one and subtracted. So one half minus one half equals zero. So that checks out. But there's some really elegant intuition to be gleaned here as well when we think about the function as a graph. Remember the integral just gives the area under the function on the interval consisting of the bounds of the integral. Now if the bounds are both a, then the interval is just a single point a. So the area there is just a single line segment going from the x-axis up to the function. And the area of that line segment, well, a line segment is just a single one dimension. So we can't have any area. You need to be two dimensional to have any area. So clearly the area of this one dimensional line segment has to be zero. Okay, on to the next property. The next property is that the integral from a to b of f of x dx plus the integral from b to c of f of x dx is equal to the integral from a to c of f of x dx. So it's kind of like if you have a bound on the top and the bottom of the integral sign that are the same, you can combine the two integrals together using the other bounds, in this case a on the bottom and c on the top. Feel free to work out some examples like this if you'd like, but here we're going to focus on the area intuition behind this. The integral of f of x from a to b represents the area under f of x on the interval from a to b. So let's draw up our b bound so that it hits the function. So the integral represents the area between a and b. Why don't we shade that in? So this here is the area under the function between a and b. Now the next integral picks up at b, that's where we left off before, and then goes to c. So it's the area from b to c, let's draw up our bound c so that it meets the function, and fill that in. So that second integral represents this area here under f of x from b to c. And so when we add these areas together, we see that we get the full area from a to c. And that's exactly what this third integral represents. Now the final property is that the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to negative of the integral from b to a of f of x dx. So really this is just saying that you can switch the bounds, you can flip flop a and b, put a up top and b on the bottom, that's valid as long as you tack on a negative sign to the outside of your integral. Okay, so why is this? Well, one way to see this is to think about the previous property. So using the previous property, we know that the integral from a to b of f of x dx plus the integral from b to a of f of x dx, we know that has to be equal to the integral from a to a of f of x dx. It's like this statement here, but with c equal to a instead. And from the first property, we know that the integral from a to a of f of x is equal to zero. So if integral from a to b plus integral from b to a is equal to zero, then they have to be negatives of each other. Now, this is probably the most precise way to see it, but there is also some intuitive insight to be gleaned here as well. The integral from a to b represents the area under f of x from a to b. The integral from b to a represents the area under f of x from b to a. So it's kind of like this integral from b to a is tracing out that area in reverse. Instead of starting at a and going to b, we're starting at b and going to a. And reverse area can be interpreted as the negative of forward area. All right, so now that we've been introduced to these properties, let's see them in action. Our first problem over here on the left is to compute the integral from e to e of sine of x times natural log of x with respect to x. And yikes, sine of x times natural log of x, that seems like a pretty tough integral. But lucky for us, we don't actually have to compute the antiderivative of this function inside the integral. Look at the bounds of the integral. It runs from x equals e to x equals e. So the region of integration here is just a line segment, and line segments always have area 
of 0. So there we go. That was easy. On to the next problem. If integral from 2 to 4 of f of x dx equals 3, then what is the integral from 4 to 2 of f of x dx? Well, this integral from 4 to 2 is just reversing the direction of the original integral from 2 to 4. So all that happens is the sign of the integral gets reversed. So instead of positive 3, it's negative 3. And that's all there is to it. And the final question, if the integral from 2 to 4 of f of x dx equals 3, and the integral from 4 to 5 of f of x dx equals 1, then what is the integral from 2 to 5 of f of x dx? Well, the simple way to solve this is just to break up this area under 2 to 5, break it up into two areas, one area on the region from x equals 2 to x equals 4, and then the other area on the region from x equals 4 to x equals 5. If you put these two areas together, you get the full area. So this integral here is just the sum of these two integrals, which means that it comes out to 3 plus negative 1, which is just 2. And then we're done. Here's another problem. If the integral from 0 to 2 of f of x dx equals 5, and the integral from 0 to 6 of 2 f of x minus 3 g of x dx equals 4, and the integral from 6 to 0 of g of x dx equals 8, then what is the integral from 2 to 6 of f of x dx? Wow, this is a lot of information. Where should we start? Well, why don't we start with the most complicated piece of information, this integral here. Let's take that integral and just try to expand it out a bit. So integral from 0 to 6 of 2 f of x minus 3 g of x dx equals 4. We can break up this integral a bit. Let's first break it up over the subtraction sign. So integral from 0 to 6 of 2 f of x dx minus integral from 0 to 6 of 3 g of x dx equals 4. And then let's factor out these constants outside of the integral. So 2 times the integral from 0 to 6 of f of x dx minus 3 times the integral from 0 to 6 of g of x dx equals 4. Okay, so now let's see if there's any information that we can fill in here. Um, hey, look at this. This is an integral from 0 to 6 of g of x. That's an integral from 6 to 0 of g of x. So we can relate this integral here to the given bit of information here. Um, we know that the integral from 6 to 0 of g of x, um, if that's 8, then the integral from 0 to 6 of g of x dx, we just flip these bounds, reverse the direction of the area, and we just need to tack on a negative sign to the result. So that's negative 8. So here we can put in negative 8. So let's go ahead and simplify that. So we have 2 integral from 0 to 6 of f of x dx minus 3 times our negative 8 goes in for there. That's equal to 4. And I guess we can just solve for this integral here, the integral from 0 to 6 of f of x, by just simplifying this whole expression. So 2 times that integral from 0 to 6 of f of x dx uh, plus 24 is equal to 4. And that means 2 times the integral from 0 to 6 of f of x dx is equal to 4 minus 24, which is negative 20 which means the integral from 0 to 6 of f of x dx is equal to negative 20 divided by 2, which is negative 10. Okay, so that's cool, but we want to find the integral from 2 to 6 of f of x. So how are we going to do that? We have the integral from 0 to 6 of f of x, but hey, look, we also have the integral from 0 to 2 of f of x. And we know that if we put these two integrals together, the integral from 0 to 2 of f of x, plus the integral from 2 to 6 of f of x, we get this integral from 0 to 6 of f of x. Let's just write down that statement for now. So integral from 0 to 2 of f of x dx, plus integral from 2 to 6 of f of x dx is equal to the integral from 0 to 6 of f of x dx. Now we know what this is. This is just negative 10. So we can go ahead and sub that into here. So it equals negative 10. And we know that the integral from 0 to 2 of f of x, that's given by 5. So we can go ahead 
and sub that in as well. So this is 5. So 5 plus the integral from 2 to 6 of f of x dx equals negative 10, and we can just solve, subtract 5, and get that the integral from 2 to 6 of f of x dx is equal to negative 15. And there we go, we've got it. So now we know how to use the properties of definite integrals. We often use the fact that integrals represent area. In the future, we'll extend this idea and learn how to use integrals to compute various kinds of areas.